Jurong Island's upcoming hydrogen-ready power plant represents a major step up in Singapore's sustainability efforts. The plant's energy supplier, YTL Power Saraya, stresses that its effectiveness relies on cooperation among different jurisdictions. This will be vital for building the necessary systems to support green hydrogen use. Nadira Zaidi spoke with its group CEO, John Eng. A new hydrogen-ready power plant will be built right here at Jurong Island. The plant will generate 600 megawatts of cleaner energy with one-third less carbon emissions than natural gas. Energy supplier YTL Power Soraya invested 800 million Singapore dollars in this new plant, which is expected to be ready by the end of 2027. How cost efficient is it to have a hydrogen gas turbine compared to a regular turbine? Yes, it may cost slightly higher uh, because it is a 600 megawatt plant and it's also a hydrogen ready plant. But the efficiency you actually get out of this plant, uh, plus the fact that you generate less CO2, uh, will also result in economic savings for the company. Take for example, if the efficiency uh, is improved by 10%, it actually means that uh, uh, your dollar per value from just from pure efficiency gain can actually give you an improvement about maybe 15% there about. In terms of CO2, your CO2 reduction is also in the region about say 17%. Uh, the carbon tax on dollar per mega, uh, ton of electricity. So what does that mean for Singaporeans? Does it mean it will cost more for them? I don't think it will impact Singaporeans from the perspective that it's running on natural gas. I believe the plant will continue to provide very, very competitive pricing into Singapore with the savings in carbon tax that we have to pay and also uh, uh, lesser fuel to generate the same uh, unit of electricity, I believe there will be savings for the general public uh, as a whole. So let's talk about jobs now and career prospects. You know, how many jobs will this, you know, uh, uh, this new hydrogen gas turbine will create? And are you worried about any of your staff being left behind? When you have a new plant, you have to make sure that you have uh, new and new. Uh, uh, strong workmen uh, able ready to take on the new job and at the same time you have also old jobs uh, that is going to be uh, decommissioned and some of these people will be uh, uh, probably left stranded so it's actually very very important for us that uh, we try to minimize any uh, potential disruption uh, to the livelihood of our workers by making sure that our workers are reskilled early uh, upskill uh, uh, early so that they are all ready for the new plan can you give me some examples of how jobs will change? We have just uh, decommissioned our Jurong Power Station open cycle gas turbine. Uh, uh, many of our workers uh, are now uh, reskilled to operate uh, a different part of the plants in the company. For example, they are, they are now uh, trained and retrained to operate in our combined cycle gas turbine. So these are some of the examples how we make sure uh, that we minimize the impact of uh, disruption to our workers. And especially so when our workers are still young, able to actually learn and, uh, and uh, upskill readily. So one way to work towards the uh, goal of net zero by 2050 is also through international cooperations. Uh, do you mind just elaborating on that? How have you worked with other countries? You need the entire ecosystem to be developed to have a full uh, value chain of the hydrogen reaching Singapore. When you reach Singapore, you need to have an infrastructure to receive uh, the hydrogen. Even if you can receive, you must be able to regas the liquid hydrogen uh, into uh, 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 gas, gasifying uh, hydrogen and uh, transport it via pipelines uh, into the power station. So the entire ecosystem uh, uh, takes time to develop and uh, there are various parties very interested in uh, developing those uh, part of the ecosystem. We are expecting, I think, nine hydrogen-capable uh, power plants in Singapore in the coming years. Um, are you, you know, working together to make it a more, you know, sustainable, uh, you know, green power generating uh, industry? No man is an island, uh, especially so in the area of energy transition, where collaboration is actually very, very important 
take for example in the regional power grid, you need the cooperation and collaboration of the jurisdiction across the whole of ASEAN for electricity to be transmitted from one to another. Some countries are better endowed with uh, greener energy in very remote areas. Uh, some countries have got the benefit of very huge load that's able to take the electricity. So I think by leveraging on the strength and uh, uh, opportunity that's available, we can actually move uh, electricity from one to another. We are in the area of energy transition where a lot of things are still exploring. I think that area of cooperation and collaboration together with the Energy Market Authority is, out, is very, very important to make sure that uh, we minimize the obstacles that we, we, we're facing when, when we are developing those projects.